hi everyone to this week's uh, dev call hub dev call so um, here is the agenda uh, as always a reminder please add topics to the discussion list below in case there is something that you would like to discuss um yeah, I will start with a short update for the hub team at Informal and afterwards I'll pass it to Lex, I assume, to for the for the Haifa Haifa server update. Um okay, so Gaia V15. Uh hurry, it's uh, it's the proposal is live, right? So we have the proposal live. You can follow here the link. Uh the upgrade uh, date will be March 20th. Uh it took longer than expected. There were multiple issues. We kept discussing about them in the last period. So the last in the last two weeks, basically what we did, we updated to the latest version of SDK, but more important, uh, so SDK 47, of course, uh, more important, we added support for meta protocols. So in case you've seen the previous dev call, we are discussing with uh, the Asteroid protocol team about an issue that they had. Uh, 47 was changing was changing something in the SDK uh, that was breaking their approach. So we had to fix that. So now uh, here you can follow the documentation and uh, check the details of how the new additions will just allow, uh, allow people to create the meta protocols on top of the hub. So this is pretty cool. Um, cool. Then uh, Gaia V16. So we mentioned last time that uh, V15 upgrades to 47. Then the idea is that 47 enables a bunch of integrations, a, lot, a bunch of features that are quite interesting. Um, so we started working on uh, several of them. In the last two weeks, we made progress on the ICA controller. So uh, especially we are working with Neutron on defining the use case. Most likely for the V16 upgrade, we'll add vanilla IC controller. That means we'll connect it to the OT module. Uh, so basically anybody on the, you can create an account on, uh, on Neutron, a ICA account, and you can control it from the hub um, or on Neutron or on any other chain uh, that has uh, the host activated. Um, However, what we want to do in Neutron is to enable, so one use case is to enable the community pool to vote on Neutron's proposals. Uh, but we need, there are a bunch of design decisions that we have to make, right? Things like how much of that community pool can vote or what's the voting power that we'll have there. At the moment, the Neutron in the community pool, I think it's 40 million. And this would be too much. I, it's the community pool will take control of Neutron completely, almost, or something like this. So it's not a good idea. We need to cap that. So there are some things that we need to deal with and also to properly test it. So most likely, it will not end up in V16. Um, also, we drafted a signal proposal for the IBC rate limiter. Uh, this is the Stride implementation. So it's an SDK implementation that. Uh, it's already running on Stride, and it's uh, based on the Osmosis implementation, which is in Cosmosm, and that one runs on Osmosis already. Um, so we want to add that to the to the hub, in case uh, there is an exploit of one of the IBC bridges, we limit how much you can transfer to them at uh, at a given time. Uh, so we plan to put that proposal on the forum as soon as possible, so in the next days. Uh, then, without going to details, since it's an emergency, it's a security thing, uh, we have an uh, emergency upgrade planned for tomorrow at uh, 15 UTC. Uh, so the block height, we already decided on it, it's this one. More information will be communicated shortly, so in the next hours. We already informed the validators that an upgrade will happen, we just didn't know the height yet. We and we'll cut soon a release for uh, so a final release that we'll upgrade to. So it will be keep in mind that this is an upgrade on top of the current version of Gaia that is running on the hub that is 14.1. So it will be 14.2 because 15 is still 
under voting, right? So it's, uh, which means that most likely, most likely, not most likely for sure, when we upgrade to V15, we'll actually have to communicate all validators to upgrade to 15.1, which will contain the same uh, patches that are existing in this emergency upgrade. So, but this is something that we're gonna take care of to make sure that everybody is aware of this. Um, another thing that we are doing is preparatory work for upgrading Gaia to SDK 050. I said this before, we don't want to get into the position to be so much behind uh, the latest version of SDK, right? So it happened with 47, so it happened with 45, and the upgrade 47 was quite painful. There, was, there were a lot of changes, and it's just not good practice. And especially since 45 is uh, end of life for half a year or more. So we want to avoid that. So we start working in advance. And there are two prerequisites for uh, upgrading SDK to 50. Is first of all, the ICS upgrade. With this, we did a bunch of the work last year, uh, just that it's, it's on a branch. It's just on a branch and it's not yet a release. So what we are working at the moment is to have an alpha release to incorporate into that release everything that we kept adding on interchange security in the meantime, all the fixes, all the new features and stuff. And we plan to have an alpha release by end of week. By alpha release, what we understand is that it will be good for for other chains, consumer chains to test it for integrations. So if Neutron or Stride or other consumer chains want to use SDK 50, so they will be able to start testing this uh, and work on that, but it's not production ready yet. We're gonna work though to get a final release for sure. Um, the other thing is we upgraded, uh, so it's the L upgrading LSM to SDK 50. So we already have a draft PR. It's on in our own uh, branch or fork of Cosmos SDK for now. Um, but yeah, the upgrade is done. Of course, we'll need to review it. At the moment, I think there are a ridiculous amount of files that are modified. We need to review it and then create a, create a release on, uh, on the main SDK repo. Uh, for now, for 50, will, uh, Gaia will remain on uh, special branch or special release of uh, of SDK due to this LSM dependency. Um, then uh, the next thing is ICS epochs. So this is something that it was always on our to-do list. We didn't know the priority. Then we, did, we got a request from the Neutron team that uh, uh, they would love to have this to reduce the cost of relaying. So that was the main concern, cost of relaying. At the moment, probably we need to relay one block, one uh, packet per block due to ICS to each consumer chain. So epochs will just in it will simplify that. You just send these updates once every X blocks. And I think the default will be 600, so around one hour. Once every hour we send validator updates to all the consumer chains. So we already have a draft PR. We have data, we have an ADR we discussed before about it. The target release is Gaia V16. Uh, these are actually changes, This uh, the epochs feature are changes just on the provider because the consumer doesn't care when it's receiving the updates. It's just receiving updates, applied updates. Uh, we also created the, like expanded the model, the model based testing to be able for us to test the feature once it's ready. Uh, a cool thing about the epochs is that, so I'll jump into partial security, the, the new design of epochs simplifies the implementation of partial self security. So I'm not going to details why, but at a very high level, we are changing how we store in state validator updates for consumer chains. Makes, it makes the logic much simpler. It enables us to simplify the logic for key assignment. So this is quite, uh, we are quite happy about that. Uh, also regarding PSS, we finish the uh, implementing the reward distribution protocol. And we also have a pull request for enabling per consumer chain, uh, yeah, per consumer chain commission rates. Uh, 
We yeah. had a discussion on the forum about that. Oh, so go ahead, go ahead Mars. I was going to give some more uh, details on that and stuff, but you, if you were you're going to talk about the discussion already. Yeah, so we had a discussion on the forum, and this is actually something that I think it's still worth discussing whether... So at the moment, this is for PSS, but it's orthogonal to PSS. We can do this. We could pull this feature out and add it to, to the current implementation of replicate security. So we can make it available sooner. The big question is, do we want to do that? It's, is there a benefit in doing so? So Jehan, I guess this is where you wanted to go. So I'll let you. Yeah, it's it's uh, actually, so if, uh, the forum discussion, I guess we dropped maybe the link in the, in the summary or something here, but it's uh, the, the forum discussion is actually, um, uh, it, it's about basically like, um, you know, there, it's just not a finish. Sorry, Adi, what was that? Adi, were you saying something? I okay. Well, I, I'll just continue. Maybe it was uh, some some background. Um, basically, uh, you know, consumers are not they're giving percent less percent like that right so um the uh, the uh the thing that bring the commission rates out is pretty interesting because in general the cost of running consumer for cost they have to you know shell out the money and uh the benefit is going to the validator set because you know part of the cosmos hub and everything but also a lot of the benefits going to the uh delegators um because having um because having the um you know the uh the, the the chain as part of the ecosystem is good for the long term they're kind of like holding the tokens and so allowing validators to change the commission rate per consumer chain is actually really powerful to improve the economics of ics because if there's a chain uh that would be profitable if they were you know giving like 100 percent of the rewards to the hub it would be profitable for the validators um but they're not profitable for the validators since they're only giving 25% of their rewards to the hub. This allows the validators to boost the amount of commission they take. I have a, yeah, that's, thanks for sharing your screen. There's a graph there. So basically it's this illustrating here where there's a chain that's like not profitable as a consumer chain, but it is profitable as a standalone chain. But when you allow the validators to say, hey, for this particular chain, we got to take more to make it worth it. Cause it just doesn't have, you know, the fees or whatever that, that we need to sustain the size of the set. Um, it makes it so that they can adjust that. So they can say, you know what, for this chain, we're just going to have to charge a little bit more. Um, and that's something that validators can adjust per just per consumer chain on their own. Um, and it's not something that's set by governance or something like that. It's like all the validators just decide if they need to charge more to run a specific consumer chain because it's costing them more. They can just do that um, with, you know, without asking anybody. They can just adjust things to where they need to to make it make sense. So um, pretty excited about that. Um, I'm also, I was surprised it turned out uh, one of one of our devs, Simon, uh, who's working on the the partial set security stuff, he was like, "Hey, you know what? We could just we could just change the commission rate right here in the code." And I was like, "Oh my god, that's you know." I thought it was actually going to take a lot longer to be able to get this in, so I'm pretty excited that we were able to, you know, randomly you know make it happen. Um, so yeah, a lot of times on in software development, you know, things end up taking way longer than you thought. Um, so it's nice when they take a lot shorter, uh, you know, a lot shorter than you thought. But anyway. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm also excited about this thing. And uh, in, it's quite a simple solution. It's, uh, we managed to hook it into the SDK and to the distribution module very easily to get this done. So that was really cool. Um, but yeah, I would, uh, I would like us to better understand what if chains will need, will want this, or will just add the extra complexity to how you configure a consumer chain and validators will actually not even want to touch it. So yeah. because it does entail pulling this back, uh, pulling this into replicate security and releasing it will require a bit of work, clearly. I, I don't think we should pull it back myself. I think we should just have it be one of the features that's coming out and then new release of ICS um, along with partial set security. So, okay. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, two more uh, updates. Uh, we finally have a backward compatibility test in the in the CI, running in the CI for interchain security. We worked on this for a bit. Uh, 
quite a lot of headaches, but we we are happy about this. That will enable us. I think this is very important, even in this current scenario with uh, one provider, the hub, and two consumers, try the neutron. But this is especially important once we get more consumer chains through PSS. Because then compatibility means, let's say that we have 20 consumer chains, right? Some of them opt-in, some of them top end. It's maintaining ICS will become harder. And having proper compatibility, like ways to test these compatibilities, I find it very, very important. So it will, I think it's a prerequisite for us to enable that. Um, so really excited about this. And also we, there was an issue that was open on, uh, on Gaia regarding the vesting, uh, uh, regarding LSM and the uh, vesting accounts. So the idea was that, so you can find here more details about it. Uh, the, the title is vesting accounts are accessible to liquid staking module. So due to the nature of how, how the vesting accounts or how the delegations in the vesting accounts are calculated, uh, people could not easily just get uh, get liquid staking, right? Or using the LSM. So uh, we we have a fix for that. It's in review. So we'll bring it most likely in. Uh, I would assume maybe sixteen as well. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much on our side. Any questions? Otherwise, I'm passing it to you, Alexa. Yep. I take over Haifa stuff. Um, pretty straightforward. In the last two weeks, in terms of the test nets, both test nets are now running v15. And we also got the v15 proposal on chain and help with comms for mainnet. Um, Dante's off this week, but uh, before he left and when he comes back, we're continuing to prep for V16 testing. Uh, today on Testnet Wednesday, we did our Pion 1 upgrade. It went really smoothly. Testnet validators are extremely fast. Um, and then Haifa sits around and holds our validators back before the chain starts going. So we get like a nine minute rest in these Testnet Wednesdays. Um, we've also done the local testing for this emergency upgrade on mainnet for v14.2. Uh, both manual and Cosmovisor went fine. So I think we're in good shape for tomorrow. In terms of our testnet incentives program, we just closed out period three. It's been going really well. Before I talk about the details, I just want to do like a self shout out to the Haifa team that all the calculations for the incentives program, the disbursements and the emails for this, they happen within two days of the period ending, which is just wild to have something close out that quickly. Um, I'm really proud of my team for how smooth that's been going. Uh, tip was for 50,000 US dollars in Adam. We have 30,000 remaining in our multi-sig wallet. Adam has risen since we made this uh, request. So when the period ends, any unused funds will either be sent back to AADAO or we can incorporate that into our request for renewing the program. This was just a six month pilot to get some information on how it works. Um, and we've gotten a lot of feedback, uh, particularly about the criteria that validators have to participate in every event, no room for errors. Um, obviously life happens. And on testnet, we're actually setting higher requirements than are needed for mainnet. You don't have to sign within five blocks um, after an upgrade on mainnet, but we require people to do that on testnet. So we're looking at relaxing that. Um, we also got uh, a suggestion from Cosmo Station about accepting emails from a validator's security contact email. Uh, as proof of identity instead of doing an on-chain transaction because the security contact email can be set, um, obviously using a transaction with the validator keys. This could just be an easier way to prove identity without having to touch your keys that one time. Uh, I did make a post about that in the Testnet Wednesday, or no, in the Testnet Incentives Program on the forum. So there's a little bit more info on that. The SDK docs are great. Uh, last time 
I talked about the partial set security testnet and doing an incentivized testnet. I've been talking a little bit more with the folks at AADAO, and I think it makes sense to fund this as an extension of the testnet incentives program. So I'll bundle that into a grant application in the future. This time uh, on the incentivized testnet, I'd like to make it a little bit more adversarial, um, see if we can get some teams going and uh, have people competing a little bit more. Game of Chains was pretty friendly. Um, and we already learned a lot. So I think if we build on that friendly collaborative testing and introduce some, nor some more adversarial testing, uh, we could make it even more educational and uh, get the word out there. Millet is our new hire at Haifa and she's gonna be helping with the design of that. So I'm really excited to have her experience on that. Nice, <laughs> welcome Violet. <laughs> Of course, the second, yeah, I challenge people to break our protocol, please. Like find bugs. Yep. Let's do it in test. <laughs> uh, do we just for fun, do we have a name for the not yet, but when we uh when we were asking our team for ideas, Dante's daughter heard about our theme of game of X and she said, me no like. So I think we might change it up this time and we're we're gonna pick a name other than Game of something. Yeah. Like Game of Thrones is not in ancient history. The the last F, the last seasons they they sucked. Uh I think when Game of uh Steak, I think was the original or something. Yeah. That was uh, a very long time ago. So maybe it is time for a new Yeah, it's time to change it up. Yeah, the new kids, the young kids don't even know what we're referencing anymore. So maybe something like succession related. I don't know. We'll we'll think of what's popping in the media world. We could do something timeless. It'll, it'll be a fun little brainstorming session. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, exciting about excited about this PSS testnet. Uh, we also I don't think I mentioned this, but we do plan to have a version of PSS. Of course, it will not be a production ready version, but by the end of the month to have something ready for the testnet where we can just test the main capabilities. Validators uh, opting in and out, consumer chains joining us either opt-in or different shades of token. Uh, and, uh, and also to check reward distribution and all of these things, right? So it will uh, it will be interesting. And of course, key assignment, because that was the the big pain point in the last uh, in the last yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, and since uh, since Game of Chains, some folks have developed tooling that shows that more easily. Like we have better, easier ways of querying which validators have done their key assignment. Um, so we make use of that on the testnet. And uh, maybe we've been talking about making it a requirement for testnet Wednesdays because, um, yeah, we should all be doing key assignment. We shouldn't be reusing keys. And that's just a good norm we have to keep pushing out there. Yeah, that's a good idea. And it will be great if we manage to get front ends onto this uh, test. Yeah. And yeah. to get more in touch, because there are a bunch, in, especially now that if we start adding more chains, information to the users, like I'm trying to un unbond or I'm getting rewards, where are those rewards coming from? Mm -hmm. uh, this may be more relevant than before. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, any any other things, questions, comments? I think we're good. Yep. I'll stop sharing. Um. Yeah, I guess that's uh, that's it for today then. Okay. Yeah, bye-bye. Thanks everyone for joining. Take Thank care. You.